Season 3 of American Air Gunner is sponsored by Pyramid Air, the world's largest air gun mall, and Umarex, your premium air gun supplier. Hi there folks and welcome back to American Air Gunner. I thought I'd start off today's show with a bang, literally, by demonstrating the awesome power of this new Sam Yang 50 caliber pre-charged pneumatic air gun. And it's quite possibly the most powerful pre-charged pneumatic air gun you can buy off the shelf. Let me take it over to the bench and show you some features. The Sam Yang Company manufactures big bore air rifles like the 909S, which is a 45 caliber pre-charged pneumatic. But this year, they've upped the ante with two new models. Here we have the 50 caliber Dragon Claw, and they also make the 357 caliber Recluse, which we'll have on a future segment. What I like about these air rifles is that they're slim, lightweight, they shoulder very easily, they're powerful, and deadly accurate. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that accuracy by setting up a couple of critter targets downrange and taking a few shots. Like the 357 caliber Recluse and the 45 caliber 909S, the 50 caliber Dragon Claw has two power levels. Cock back the hammer halfway and you're on low power. Cock it back completely and you've got full power and at full power it will sling a 225 grain round nose bullet at close to 700 feet per second for 238 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle and that's plenty of power for knocking down medium-sized game like woodchuck and coyote out to reasonable distances. As a matter of fact, I've got a critter target downrange. Let me go ahead and demonstrate the awesome accuracy of the Dragon Claw. Another feature I like personally about the Sam Yang air guns is that they come with iron sights and that's a lot of fun to shoot offhand. There is one drawback though, the rear sight is welded on and that makes it a little bit difficult to scope. You might want to use a compact scope or high rings. We've managed to split the difference with this 3-9 scope and it seems to work really well. Now we're only getting about 5 good shots per 3000 PSI fill up with this air gun, but good news, a double reservoir version of both the Dragon Claw and the Recluse is available very soon. Let me go ahead and try for a vital shot now. Well, from here, that looks like a pretty darn good 35 yard vital shot. Now, before we close the segment, I'm going to put up the graphic of our chronograph results using 225 grain round nose bullets and a 3000 PSI fill up, plus something a little special.
Well, folks, it's summertime, and this is the season to be shooting your CO2 guns outdoors. When it's, say, between 70 and 80 degrees outside, you'll get the most power from a CO2 cartridge, and that's because it's a temperature-dependent gas. Higher temperatures mean more power and more velocity. All of the pistols on this table are offered by Umarex, and they are replicas of actual firearms. For instance, the Smith & Wesson 686 and the Beretta Model 92 are beautiful examples of replica pistols and are made from some seriously heavy metal. The subject of today's segment is blowback action pistols. And these guns use a little bit of the CO2 gas to slide back the action with each shot just like a real semi-automatic firearm. And that puts a nice little kick in your hands and a great level of realism. But just how much power is in a blowback action pistol? Well, we built a neat little rig to demonstrate the power behind some of these blowback pistols. It's not a scientific test, but we think it will give you an idea of the difference between some of these blowback pistols. Let's go inside and we'll show you what we made. Oh, and before I forget, here's an important tip for you. When you're shooting your CO2 guns outdoors, don't leave them in direct sunlight. Some of these black guns especially can get so hot that the valves will lock up on you and they won't shoot. That's right, the CO2 will get so hot, these things won't even fire. So, when you step away, just put a nice little cover on them and you'll keep them nice and cool. Whoa! <laughs> Mad scientist. Not quite. Well, here's the contraption we built to measure the blowback force of action pistols. It's made from mostly aluminum, and it consists of one main part, and that's the trolley that holds the pistol. Although the trolley won't be traveling far at all, we've attached nylon wheels to it that ride on two tracks, and these help reduce the friction as much as possible. The pistol is anchored to the trolley at the grip using a Velcro strap. In the front, we mounted a weaver base to the trolley, and this locks down the pistol at the accessory rail. To fire the pistols, we have a hydraulic trigger release mechanism attached to the trigger guard. And finally, to measure the blowback force, we mounted an electronic trigger gauge to the base with its arm hooked over the trolley. This mechanism isn't going to tell us the actual force of the blowback pistol because you have to take into consideration the weight of the trolley and this trigger release mechanism. But it's going to remain constant from pistol to pistol and it will tell us which one has the most kick. We'll start out with the CP99 Compact, then we'll do the Desert Eagle, the SA177, and finally the Beretta PX4 Storm. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, let's go ahead and mount the Desert Eagle on this contraption and see how it measures up. All right, next up is this little Glock replica, the Umarex SA-177. Let's see how this one performs. All right, let's switch out this Umarex SA-177 for our last, but certainly not least, blowback action pistol, the Beretta PX4 Storm. All right, well it's time to crunch the numbers and find out which pistol has the most blowback force. 
Well, the results are in, and the winner of our blowback pistol test was the Beretta PX4 Storm. And we got a measurement of 24.76 ounces average. Surprisingly, in second place was the Umarex SA177, which gave us 17.84 ounces. And we think that's due to the fact that it's the lightest pistol in the group, but it has a metal slide. In third place was the CP99 Compact, and that gave us 14.5 ounces. And finally, the biggest and baddest gun in the group, the Magnum Research Desert Eagle, gave us only 5.46 ounces. And we think that's due to the fact that it has a plastic slide and it's the heaviest of the group. Well, there you have it, the results of our blowback pistol experiment. Again, it wasn't a scientific experiment, but it sure was a lot of fun to execute. And no matter how these pistols measure up against one another, they sure are a lot of fun to shoot. Well, even though sadly Crystal Ackley will not be joining us on this season of American Air Gunner, we do have a couple of segments stashed away that were taped early last summer. So, while I get these hungry trout fed here, why don't you enjoy this safety segment brought to you by Umarex USA and hosted by our own Crystal Ackley. Come here, you monsters. Come on, eat up. You're nice and fat so we can fish you out. Among the various safety precautions you should practice while handling air guns is to always be aware of where your gun is pointed and when it's loaded, especially when you're around other people. A simple and effective way we like to do that on American Air Gunner is to mark our gun barrels with chamber flags and our gun cases with stickers that indicate the direction of the barrel inside the case. As you can see here, I've gone ahead and marked my case with a red sticker. In doing so, I've ensured that the gun is already pointed in a safe direction when the case is open. Without touching the trigger, I want to check to make sure that the pistol is on safe. It's on safe, so the next thing I want to do is make sure that it's not loaded. This particular pistol is stored with an open breech and no clip inside. In addition, I can actually look down the barrel and see that there's no pellet in the chamber, so I know that it's not loaded. The next step is to insert the chamber flag. chamber flag is in and the pistol is now ready to go on the pistol rack. If your pistol comes with a drop-free magazine, the first thing you'll want to do is check to make sure that the pistol's on safe. If it's on safe, just go ahead and take your magazine out. This particular pistol has both the ammunition and the CO2 in the magazine. With the magazine out, you can go ahead and insert your chamber flag. The pistol is now ready to be stored. Now that I've showed you how to safely remove a pistol from its case, I'm going to do the same with a rifle. As you can see on the end of my case, I've marked a red sticker indicating which way the barrel is pointed inside. Okay, here we have the pre-charged pneumatic 177 caliber Hammerly Pneuma. The first thing I wanna do is check to make sure that the rifle's on safe. It is. So next, I wanna go ahead and open the breech without cocking the rifle. When the breech is open, I can take a look and see that there's no pellet in the barrel. So. It is safe to go ahead and insert my chamber flag. Now, for spring rifles, it's basically the same process. The first thing you'll want to do is check to make sure that your rifle's on safe. My rifle is on safe, so I'm going to go ahead and take the chamber flag out, then break my barrel. I'm going to check to make sure that there's no pellet in the barrel. There's not, so I'm going to lock it back and insert my chamber flag. Now, remember, you can practice using chamber flags and indicating stickers not only when you're taking your guns out of the case, but also when you're storing them on a rack or walking away from your gun. Here in the Catskill Mountains, beef and dairy farms are commonplace. Beautiful, rustic old barns like this one right here might seem picture perfect on the outside, but on the inside, sometimes it can be quite a different story.
Generations of pigeons have caused such fouling that in some of these barns, it's even difficult to breathe on a hot summer day. With the permission of the local farm manager and the accuracy of this 22 caliber CO2 powered 850 air magnum, Dylan and I are going to take turns inside the barn and hunt enough pigeons to make a nice stew. All right, I see one roosting on the air vent up there. I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Got him. All right, let's go retrieve that bird. Well, there's our pigeon. It fell right on the cart there. There it is. That was a nice clean shot. There was no flapping or struggling or anything, and that's the way I like it. Okay, I'll go grab him. I gotta say, hunting pigeons this year proved to be a lot more challenging than we expected. We could get pretty close to the barn, but as soon as we took aim, the birds took flight. Last season I hunted pigeons with Crystal and we were pretty successful. This barn is clean. The birds in that barn were a lot less frightened by us and we took enough of them for Dylan's wife Brittany to treat us to a wonderful homemade pigeon pie. Dylan had the most success this year with four pigeons, and his tactic was to simply wait in the barn for them to return. You can tell that there's been pigeons in here a lot. They roost all along this track that runs the entire length of the barn, because the droppings, you can see, run all the way down the center of the barn. Got these piles of lumber covered in pigeon droppings. This Hammerly 850 Air Magnum is great for shooting from the inside of these barns. See, the barns have these big wide boards, plywood, and then steel roofing. And this is powerful enough to, to take the pigeons, but not powerful enough to go through the boards and get to the steel roofing. So we don't have to worry about putting a hole in the farmer's roof, which would cause a leak. Alright, we got that one pigeon. Um, we just got to find it now. There's a bunch of stuff in here, uh, as you can see. So, could be, could have gotten wedged down in between something. We'll just have to kind of take a look around. Now, when I shot it, well, there's two. All right, well, while we were trying to look for the other one, one flew right up into the window and we shot that. Um, now we're outside. Let's go see if we can find that. It should be right over here. Oh, and there it is, right there. Well, okay, we have our ingredients here for our pigeon stew. I just cut up some celery. We also have an onion, some garlic, fresh sage from the garden, also some fresh parsley from the garden, and rosemary. Of course, we have our pigeon there. We also have some peppered bacon that we're gonna wrap those breasts in.
We'd like to thank you folks for joining us on today's episode of American Air Gunner. Until next time, shoot safe, have fun, and bon appetit. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> All right. Cheers.